All right. This is the review for EOC 3 that you took uh, this week. So I'm going to explain to you the first 21 answers of the quiz. Share. We'll zoom in just a little bit. All right, so question one. Remember, you've seen this question three times. Which of the following was the main reason for the rapid settlement of the Great Plains during the late 1800s? That was a vocab term, the Homestead Act. Remember, the government was giving out land out west to encourage Americans to settle the west. So the answer would be G, homesteading, allowing people to claim public land. All right, question two, st years of statehood. Which factor facilitated statehood for the darker shaded region? This is another vocab term. We talked about the Transcontinental Railroad, which crossed right through Northern Utah to, ne to Nebraska. This provided Americans access to, these to this territory so that they, they could become states. So the answer here, we see railway lines. That's gonna be B, number two. Okay, number three, the primary objective of the Dawes Act was to do what? This is straight vocab. Dawes Act's purpose was to force Native Americans to assimilate. Assimilations when you become more like your surroundings. So they wanted Native Americans to become more like Americans and to lose their tribal identity by making them become farmers. So we're gonna pick A. Do not pick B because it says corporate farmland. A, promote cultural assimilation of Native Americans. Let's go to question four. This photographs are the same student at Carlisle Indian School during the late 19th century. So we have a before and after. So this is kind of tied with the Dawes Act. They wanted to remove the tribal identity of these Native American tribes and make them look more like a, uh, an American. So that has to do with assimilation. So we're going to go with G. All right, number five, in the late 1800s, a Supreme Court decision in Plessy versus Ferguson. This is straight up vocab. You have to know the vocab for this class to be successful. And we do all our vocab when we do our lectures. So you have to know Plessy versus Ferguson legalized segregation. So you're going to see segregation here and you're going to pick G. Number six, the legislation affected how federal employees were hired. So we look at this newspaper article, we see the Pendleton Act. Congress passes the Pendleton Act after the assassination of James Garfield. Garfield was shot by an office, office seeker. His name was Charles Gateau. He felt that he deserved a job because of the spoil system. Garfield didn't give him a job, so he, uh, Gateau shot him. Garfield dies. Uh, Chester A. Author, who becomes president, passes the Pendleton Act, which forces you to take a test to show that you could get a government job. It ends the spoil system. So we're going to do civil service exam, just like an ACT to help you get into school. This was a test that helped you get a government job. So we're going to go G. Question seven, we have somebody that looks remarkably like Boss Tweed. And it is Boss Tweed. We see down here at the bottom of the political cartoon, Boss Tweed is standing by a ballot box where you vote. So the question is, which concern is expressed in this Thomas Nass cartoon? Remember, Thomas Nass was the Republican cartoonist who was trying to take out Boss Tweed because he was corrupt and stealing millions of dollars from New York taxpayers. And Boss Tweed ran the political machine of New York City. So we're going to go with D, political machines manipulated people and committed fraud and, and encouraged people to vote for them by giving them jobs and, and spoil system stuff. Question eight, reasons for economic problems of the Gilded Age, rapid growth of trust, ruthless business tactics of, of robber barons, use of unfair practices by the railroads. So this is another straight up vocab term and the key term here is railroads. How did the US government respond to these problems? And the only one that we've talked about so far in class is the Interstate Commerce Act, which regulated railroads shipping across state lines. Question nine, settlement houses were created because of increasing what? This is one of our immigration questions. We talked about new immigrants, immigrants coming from Southern and Eastern Europe to the United States. They needed help because they, they had very little skills and most of them were, were living in poverty and settlement houses helped them assimilate into American culture. So we're gonna go with immigrant populations, A. Okay, question 10. In the spring of 1882, the Chinese Exclusion Act was passed. We're gonna skip down here. This act provided an absolute 10 year moratorium. A moratorium is like a ban. So Chinese couldn't immigrate into the United States on Chinese labor. So Americans in California didn't want Chinese immigrants to come because they were afraid they were gonna take their jobs. So we're gonna go with H. They thought that this would reduce competition for US jobs. 
keep Chinese out, there's more jobs available for Americans. Question 11, how did Jacob Rees and Jane Addams affect the lives of immigrants during the 20th century? Jacob Rees and Jane Addams were two early reformers of the Gilded Age who wanted to help those in need and their focus was on the poor new immigrants coming into the country. So Jacob Rees took the photographs, Jane Addams built the settlement houses. The photographs helped expose the terrible living conditions of these immigrants and Jane Addams and settlement houses helped provide educational and social opportunities to immigrants so they could assimilate. So we're gonna go D, D. Question 12, a high school teacher wrote these bullet points on a whiteboard. What was the most likely topic of discussion? Escape from religious persecution, hope for freedom and equality, hope for better economic conditions, escape from political turmoil and war. These are the push-pull factors. That was a vocab term from uh, unit two. These were the push and pull factors for new immigrants to come to the United States. So we're going to H, reasons for immigration. Question 13, we have a political cartoon. We have these well-to-do Americans, but their shadows are of their former immigrant past. And they're blocking this new immigrant from coming into the United States. People that opposed immigration into the United States were nativists. So we're gonna go with J. Question 14, the summary, this summary describes immigration trends between 1870 and 1916. 25 million people immigrated to the United States. Population grows dramatically. What do all these people provide for the United States? Well, remember this week or last week, we talked about industrialization, building of factories. They need cheap labor in these factories. So we need a large labor force. And since we're making so many new goods, we need people to buy them. So they're also gonna become consumers. If you're buying things, you're a consumer. All Americans are buying things, we're all consumers in this capitalist market system. So we're gonna go with B, B. Question 15, use the list to answer the following question. Increase coal mining, increase petroleum refining. So that's oil. Oil was being refined into kerosene for lamps by John D. Rockefeller. The development of the Bessemer process that helps us manufacture steel and Thomas Edison invents the light bulb. What do these events on the list have in common? That's all tied to that word that's so important in our class, industrialization. So we're gonna go with C. Question 16, we have Thomas Edison's electric lamp bulb patent. But the question is asking, how did the invention shown in this patent illustrate the effect on industry that's all part of industrialization. So if factories have lights, what can people do? What can workers do? They can work longer hours. Factories can never stop. They can work continuously. So you have different shifts. People are working in these factories all the time. Just like Amazon, the Amazon warehouses are never shut down. People are working in those Amazon warehouses all the time. And it's because you can see in them at night with lights. Question 17, which title best completes this list. Role of entrepreneurs, goals of Federal Reserve, objectives of trade leaders to prevent, so let's look at the list. To present new concepts or establish products, to introduce new technology, to organize and manage an enterprise. These are the people who built America. They're what? Business leaders, creative people, inventors, they're entrepreneurs. We use that word in the industrialization lesson. Entrepreneurs are the ones who take risks to start businesses. So that's A. Okay, question 18. How did Andrew Carnegie contribute to civic and social life in the United States? Well, when we did our notes on Andrew Carnegie, when you did your five to eight critical notes, hopefully you wrote that when he sold his steel company to JP Morgan, he became one of the richest people in the world and he wanted to use his money to help American society. So when you use your money or you donate your money to charities or you build things for people using your money, that's called philanthropy. So Carnegie established philanthropic organizations. He built libraries, he built uh, music centers, Carnegie Hall. Question 19, we have, a, we have a graphic organizer, reasons for movement to the cities in the early 1900s. So we have greater cultural experiences and entertainment, easier travel due to transportation advances and why else? It all has to do with industrialization. What do cities have? Greater opportunities for employment, C, 19 is C. 20, second to last question. Historically, one of the most significant migrations of population, so movement of people, 
has been the movement of people from rural to urban. Rural is farm, urban is city. So why are people leaving the farms and moving to cities? What's in a city? We just saw that in the organizer, jobs, factories. So which factor was the primary reason for the shift of people leaving farms and moving to cities? It's factories, economic transformation, manufacturing. And our last question, railroads. This form of transportation helped create industrial centers. So these are the big factory complexes. We saw, you know, Carnegie steel plants in Pittsburgh. Let's take Carnegie steel plants in Pittsburgh as an example. To make steel, you need iron ore. You need to heat the iron, so you need coal. So what are these things? They're getting them from the earth. They're raw materials that are also called natural resources. And most of these factories were on the East Coast. So we're looking at D, transporting natural resources to Eastern factories. So the final question answer on your EOC3 quiz is D, railroads. We've talked, railroads are so important in this class. We've talked about the transcontinental railroad. We've talked about uh, railroads becoming too powerful. We're gonna talk even more about railroad monopolies later in class. So that's the end of the review for the first 21 questions of uh, the EOC quizzes that we've been taking. Have a good day.